Is that a demon? That Hello. looks like a demon. Welcome to Sigma whatever fucking incarnation. This is like, what, fucking fourth by now? I didn't. Solar, do you remember Galio Ow. Ballin? Yes. I, I remember that meme so much, just Galio Ballin. When you're about to slaughter a bunch of child soldiers, Galio Ballin. Oh, it's so stupid, but it's so good. Uh, yeah. God damn. <laughs> also, Golden, you've been streaming for almost over four and a half hours now. Yeah, no, I wasn't expecting to be that shit. long. I've sorry? streamed for over 12 hours before. Oh, it's a lovely feeling, isn't it? It's fucking not afterwards. Oh, shit. I did, I did a 24-hour stream for, uh, uh, Extra Life last year with the other people I run my streaming channel with, and the day after I got back to my house, I was like, "All right, 24 hours done. Can't wait to go home and go to sleep." I laid in my bed, and I like laid there for an hour looking at the ceiling. I was like, "Well, time to go to McDonald's," and I just got up and drove to the nearest McDonald's. You ever just had that fucking- you ever just had that fucking feeling where you're like, I'm really fucking tired, I should probably sleep, and then you're just like, but I'm also hungry, and I'm not going to eat for another eight hours if I sleep at least. Yep. Fuck, I guess I'm getting food. I fell asleep on my couch as I was eating my burger. Yeah, that's, that's that's honestly one of the worst feelings is being really hungry and really tired and you just feel like you're falling asleep as you're fucking eating. It's like, oh, God, no, I can't fall asleep. I have food. I, I I woke up to the dude who like he had to stay over because his ride wasn't going to be back in town until like 1 p.m. And he was like, hey, hey, Vlad, Vlad. And I was like, uh. and he was like, but he pointed over to the edge of my couch. Apparently, I had knocked my burger off my chest in my sleep, and my dog was just, like, licking up the ketchup off of the floor. He didn't eat the burger, he just sat there licking the ketchup and the mustard. He was just like... Dad? You gonna eat this? Probably gonna eat this. Lick, lick, lick. Probably. I just picked it up and threw it in the damn trash. I was like, I'm, I'm not touching this. Uh, I threw it on the ground. I threw ah. that bitch in the trash. <laughs> Girly is stingy. Ow! Uh, uh, look at this bastard in his stupid <laughs> face! Posting in a gaming chat. Look at him, Solar! Look at his dumb face! This stupid bitch! Yeah. God, I hate him so much! You're um, stupid, how do you know? glad you're he went out the way he did. Ah, uh, catharsis. Pure Get dopamine. Fucking ah, life damn it. squeezed out of him. Oh, pure dopamine. 100%. Unfiltered black tar heroin. Oh, just. Mm. I hate him. He is the worst. Ah, oh, fuck! Watch Iron Blooded Orphans and you will understand. You will probably know what character we're talking about purely because you will develop the same feelings for him. Hmm. Uh, I guess good things do come to you if you live long enough. To think I'd be able to kill you with my own hands. So nice. I am part of Tekuden. Also, let's, like... Badass name, Tekadin, for a yeah. for a fucking mercenary company. Iron Flower, because it never wilts, it never dies. It's a lot better than Gellerhorn. Yeah. <laughs> we named ourselves after a horn blown by a Norse god, who dies. Tekadin. The virgin. Sense. Gal fucking Gellerhorn really is just a bunch of fucking whistleblowers. 
the Virgin Galahorn Horn versus the fucking Chad Tekken. If somebody hasn't made that meme, they need to. Yeah, really, the fuck? God, I... I need to... I fucking... Uh, I need to... I need to... I need to watch... I need to rewatch Iron-Blooded Orphans. Yeah, definitely. I need, I need to rewatch it. I need to rewatch Double O. Also, the 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 fact that uh that uh the main character got the two the two main chicks on him at the same time, yeah, well, then. rock rocking that shit because yeah. because they looked at the uh the the ship with nothing but women except for the one guy and were like, hey, that seems like a pretty like a pretty reasonable like relationship, a polyamorous relationship. We can make that work. And they do. They make it work until uh, circumstances in the anime that present themselves. Until circumstances happen, and then they just kind of don't have to worry about that afterwards. Yep. <laughs> oh god. Also, the design for Gundam Barbados was like bad. It was one of the most badass Gundam designs. Oh yeah, Barbados, and then Barbados fucking Lupus, and then Barbados Lupus Rex. Yep. Ugh. When they fucking added the tail, and just the tail ended up being so god- I didn't think a tail could actually be useful in combat, and then fucking sure enough, here I am being proven goddamn wrong. Why do you have to make me look like an asshole, Barbados? Barbados then says, because it's my fucking job. Also, when he got that, like... Aside from the mace, uh, when he got when he got that sword, that was basically the Dragon Slayer Great Sword from Berserk. Just a solid slab of iron, and he fucking one-handed it too. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Just like guts. Uh, rest in yeah, peace. I, I, uh, yeah. I, I fucking like how peace, too. he was literally. Tell literally yeah. throughout most of that fight, he was like, fuck, I need a better weapon for this. And then he gets Damn the it. big fucking hunk of raw iron. He's like, yeah, this will do. This will get done. The author do of... Job. The author of Berserk. <laughs> oh, yeah, the author of Berserk, yeah. God damn, the, the guy... He literally overworked himself to death. Yeah. This is, like... I've heard shit about how what it's like to be a manga artist, and just like, god damn, how many hours of sleep you get, and just, like, the, the author of Naruto couldn't take his fucking honeymoon until 15 years after he was married. Jesus. It's, like, yeah, no, it's rough, because, like, again, if you create this stuff, yeah, it's great if you get your big break. You have to still keep producing content for it. You gotta think of this shit on the fucking weekly here. And if you don't already got that planned out, or even if you do, actually putting that into writing or into animation or into whatever type of media that you're trying to put it into, yeah, it's a lot harder than people give it credit for because they're like, okay, yeah, I have the outline here. I know where the story's gonna go. I know this, that, and the other. But then you start thinking about the specifics and ordinarily, you're like, okay, yeah, the specifics aren't that important to the main gist of the story, except for the fact that you're actually gonna have to include them so the people actually understand the main gist of the story. Yeah, the fact that, like, uh, uh, Kentaro was, like, for Berserk was designing his own, like, his own fantasy world, with his own politics and kingdoms, its own intriguing and complex religious structure between a new religion and an old religion, various fantasy races, and their relationships with the humans, Guts' whole deal, Casca's whole deal, the whole damn band of the Hawks' whole deal! The dude was a fucking madman, he was Japan's version of George R. R. Martin, or Tolkien, he just Honestly, fucking worked. I, I just, I, I fucking like every time I look at shit like that, I just wonder, damn, how the fuck do people like goddamn Tolkien manage to establish such fleshed-out fucking universes? But, like that's not to, that's not to discredit J.R.R. Tolkien, uh -huh. obviously, but still, how the fuck do people do that shit? The little thing what? called a lack of sleep and a whole lot of time. A whole a lot, lot of, of imagination. Cold sweat and sleepless nights. 
Oh, mood. <laughs> Literally, fucking, that's like how half of my D&D &D characters get their backstory, though. Like, I'll have nothing when I actually create the character, and then I'll just wake up one night and be like, Oh, that's what their backstory is. Huh. J.R.R. Tolkien literally sitting in a bar with C.S. Lewis. Fucking there's J there's J. there's Tolkien. I think is one of the only goddamn authors where you could legitimately ask damn near any question in his fucking in his universe. Not even something that pertains to the main series itself. Just any general fucking question, and you could probably figure out the fucking answer. Yep. Yeah, because we, we we fucking determined this because I was like, oh yeah, how much does a fucking pair of boots cost in Middle Earth? And we actually did the fucking math. And we actually could fucking oh, figure it out. They are well, Tolkien straight up was like, okay, so the dwarves lived underground. How would they get their food? They trade the metal and the stuff that they make with the elves and the humans to get uh, food. They outsource their most precious and most, like, numerous resource, and they give it away to other people. Ah. Damn it. They go, yeah, and then they go ahead and stock up on the shit that doesn't expire very easily, which is why dwarves usually like jerky. Aside from the fact that, you know, it's obviously very meaty and, and dwarves usually enjoy the, the heartier side of food. It's also just because, hey, jerky doesn't go bad very, for, like, very long. Yeah, and they are it's able to... fucking while, yeah. They are able to store it for a very, very long time, and... I think in, like, like in lore, out of all of the races in Middle-earth, aside from dwarves, halflings have the best food. Oh yeah, halflings definitely. Fucking halflings, that's all they goddamn do. They fucking eat, they drink, they party, and they smoke. That's pretty much it. And then the dwarves, whenever you come over, they're like, Oh, you're, you're a guest? Come on, we're gonna make you a whole damn feast. And they're, you're like, oh damn, is it a special occasion? And they're like, like, no, you're just visiting. We're just doing this for you, guy. It's an excuse to get Fuck. really good alcohol and really good food, so... Damn, I was so close! That's unfortunate. What, when do you th how do you think that Amazon series on Cimmerillion is gonna go? I think it's going to be good, because it is focusing on the Second Age, which is the, uh, like, the height of Numenor, which means we're going to get to see, uh, High King Gilgalad, who was the last King of the Elves. He was the elf in the first movie that got, like, five seconds of screen time, the one with the spear, and we're going to get to see Moria at the height of its power. Honestly, yeah, I want to see fucking Dwarven Engineering at the height of its fucking power. Because, like, Battle of the Five Armies really did just fucking open my eyes to what dwarves could actually do with their fucking ingenuity. Just with, with the fucking twirly-whirlies. How do you like the twirly-whirlies? Where, and where like where are that, the old twirly whirlies, <laughs> hey, you buggers! <laughs> and the whole, and the fucking war chariots, and the fucking, the fucking mountain goats. The mountain, the the mountain goats is like the, the mountain size. goat cavalry is so goddamn funny. The size of a fucking musk ox, which is a ice age goat. That is that is my favorite thing about the musk ox. It's not a cow, it's not a bovine, it's literally a surviving creature from the Ice Age. And that scares me. The fact that goats were that big, it really just puts into perspective how fucked humans were. Yeah, the old world was actually pretty fucking terrifying. There's a reason why we had fire. It's to scare away the things that ate that thing for a casual meal. The reason we had fire so we could burn away the dark and the things that like to hide in it. Hmm, look at that big cat. It seems... big. Ah, it has tusks that are the same length of my forearm. I do not like tangling with this. This is a bad idea. Maybe I should get it to run the fuck away instead. Ha. Huh. Perhaps... There perhaps I... Perhaps I shall take shelter within this cave. What the Clearly fuck is, is occupied by a bear? Sees fucking the North American cave bear. What the fuck is that thing? What is what? Ah, that is what that is what we call a a bear god. The it fucking is a... the mini the fucking Neolithic period was literally just full of just literally it was just fuck around and find out the age. 
Oh, look at this, look at this goat. It's very large, but it's also very fuzzy. I'm pretty sure that it's not gonna be that harmful. Fucking caves in your chest by headbutting you. Oh, look at these berries. They look very tasty. Can't stop shitting and fucking dies. <laughs> Man, dysentery a bitch. <laughs> oh, look at these mushrooms. I'm sure they'll be very tasty. Yeah, I saw God for like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, honestly, I, I still fucking believe that's actually what ended up happening. That that was the forbidden fruit. Somebody fucking ate a goddamn magic mushroom. That was the discovery of mushrooms and psychedelics, and they're like, ah, shit. Damn it. They had one gram of free base DMT. Ow. That's one of my favorite, like, that is one of my favorite, like, charts. The short-faced the short-faced bear is what humans were dealing with back during the Ice Age and the Neolithic period. Ugh, that's not much. Mm. That, like yeah. that damn bear was more sizable than a polar bear. <laughs> I would rather get into a fight with a damn pack of wolves than have to look that thing in the damn face. Like no, no. wolves, you could at least kill a couple of them before they tear you apart. That bear, it, you'll scratch it, maybe. You'll you will put, it off. You will put exactly one scrape on it, and then you will die. I love this, this, like, picture of a fucking... I don't think I'm getting quite the scope of this thing. I need to see this next to a no, person. No. Okay, so I, I'm posting, like, a, a picture, like a, like, a picture of it, but... Here is a here is a uh, a recreation of what the the short faced bear would have looked like standing on its hind legs. Uh, there you see. go. Oh. Yeah, it's quite large. Oh. Okay, Mother I, I, I see the scope now. Mother I'm motherfuckers, of bears. why are you afraid of getting mauled? No, I'm afraid of that thing fucking decking me with its arms. There is actually a metric of I think like five like. Out of like, I think it was two thousand people. Some, uh, some academy did a study, and like five percent of those people thought that they could take on a grizzly bear with their bare hands. You're fucking insane. No, <laughs> I, I know, no. right? Ah, damn. It. Yeah, no, you can fucking like. There's a reason when people fucking take guns into the mountains, they bring something known as bear rounds. Fuck. You want to know why? Because they're built to kill bears. Because it turns <laughs> out normal bullets aren't actually all that effective. Because you're going to need a whole lot of stopping power to stop something <laughs> that fucking big. You see, here's how stopping power works, in case those of you uh, weren't, weren't, weren't sure, okay? Here's the metric, right? Big target need big stopping power. Puny ant bullet not stop big target. Big stopping power needed to stop big target. Ah, oh, fuck. That's yeah, it was a, uh... Big stopping power to stop very big target. Why do you oh, think I... they literally have a gun called an elephant gun? Oh! An elephant rifle, yeah. Oh, uh, I was wrong. It wasn't 5%, it was 6%. Think wow. that they could... Think they could fight a grizzly bear unarmed and win. Okay, so oh, when you, like, are these, like, fucking, like, Olympic bodybuilders or some shit like that? No, nope, just like normal fucking, people. Nope, just, just normal people. School, just fucking normal ass people, fucking high normal school ass, students and shit. Normal Those ass things, people. Yes. Grizzly bears are pure muscle. No. Oh, oh. Do you know what an even larger metric thinks that they could take on? Uh, shark. Uh, no. Yeah. Where, where is, where is the metric? Uh, sixty-four percent think they could take on a silverback gorilla with their bare hands and win. You you're mm, fucking no. insane. You're out of your mind. You no. are out of your fucking mind. Let's just take into account that a, a silverback gorilla is about 500 pounds on average. 400 pounds of that is pure, unfiltered muscle. Yep. And rage, yeah. <laughs> and they punch, at average, about 2,100 to 2,800 pounds per square inch of force in a single punch. Also, let's just take weight into account. They're like fucking, what, like 800 pounds? Some shit like that? Yep, yeah, around that. 
around 800 pounds, so all it has to do is sit on you, and you're fucking done. Like, that's just... the other thing people don't fucking seem to consider. Oh, weight class, because as it turns out, weight is actually a very large factor in determining fights. Okay, so I looked it up, and the average uh, silverback gorilla weight is around 300 to 430 pounds. Okay, yeah, so 400 pounds. That's still that's still a pretty hefty fucking amount, and he's still probably going to be able to pin you down pretty fucking easily. 